Back in the spring, I planted my container vegetable garden. The crops were planted, and as the plants have grown, so too has the promise of a tasty harvest. Well, just look at it now. Hi, I'm Ben, and today I'm going to be giving you an update as to what I've been harvesting already. And if you're looking for some ideas of what to sow now, even this late in the season, well, stick around, because I've got some ideas I'd love to share with you, and we'll be getting on and planting those later on. Well, what a difference a few weeks makes, hey? We'll start by giving you a little bit of a tour of what we've got here, and we'll also harvest a few tasty treats as well, starting with these salad onions here. These have already been harvested bit by bit, and I'm just simply easing up the biggest ones as they get to a decent size, and then leaving the remainder to grow on. And then these carrots here are also ready, so let's harvest a few of those. The great thing is you can just look for the biggest roots and then carefully lift them up to allow the others to grow on as well. And then finally for our roots, I've got these rather gorgeous beets here, or beetroot. They've got to a good size. They've got a little bit of uh, leaf minor damage that won't affect the roots and I'll eat the healthy leaves as well. So there we are. They're a good sort of golf ball size, so they'll be nice and tender. Then there are these leeks. I had some seedlings left over, so popped them into a pot and we'll see how they do. I've got three types of leafy crops here, a heading and loose leaf lettuce, and this really stunning, beautiful Cavallo Nero kale here. You can really see why it's also called dinosaur kale by these incredibly crinkly leaves. Aren't they stunning? Now the kale is harvested from the bottom up, so it's already got these long stems here where I've taken off the leaves and it's carried on growing up. We'll take a few of these for our harvest as well. The kale has been growing in quite a deep pot, which I've padded out at the bottom with lots of twigs and leaves. Clearly they love this pot and this position here because they've produced so much better than the kale that's out in the garden. And I'm harvesting the loose leaf lettuce here just by following the leaf down to where it emerges and clicking off the leaves between my uh, finger and thumb like this. And here's our harvest from those few containers, for today at least. The great thing about growing in containers is that you can move the pots to wherever you like to make the most of the conditions you've got around your garden. Now this area here is a real sun trap patio. I've been out here in my shirt sleeves when the temperature's been not that much above freezing. It really does soak up the warmth. You've got these white walls here that bounce back light and of course the paving slabs themselves absorb the sun's heat and release it. So this spot here is the perfect venue for my warmth loving crops. Here I've got some strawberries. I planted these up a few weeks ago and you can see the video on that. I'll pop a link to it in the description below. But you can see here some are fruited and some are flowering. This is a perpetual or ever-bearing strawberry that's finally started flowering and has some young strawberries forming. Looking forward to those. Then over here is just a small proportion of my chili pepper collection, the majority of which is in the greenhouse. These ones outside are less hot, although they're still spicy, and include, for example, a cayenne pepper, which is already beginning to bear its fruits. This monster here, I'm actually looking after for someone who is on vacation currently. We need to give these all a bit of a water with a high potassium feed, and I've mixed some up and I shall give them a good soaking now. For the chilli peppers, it's easier just to pop them into a tray and then none of it's wasted. And then after an hour or so, just lift them out once they've absorbed everything they need to. And then finally up here are these garlic. Now, I should have harvested these, oh, a month or so ago. They've really gone past it, but the bulbs underneath should be fine. I wanted to show you uh, what we've got under here, the big reveal, so let's do that now. Just uh, shake them out into this tray here. Okay, so they're not the biggest garlic bulbs, but they're definitely usable. I'm gonna use these fresh straight away, and my main crop garlics in the greenhouse will provide me with a stored crop to enjoy later on. Now let's get on and sow some more vegetables to keep our crops coming. I'm starting with carrots and I'm sowing them nice and thinly across a potting mix that is soil based and that will help with drainage which carrots really need. I'm using a 
quick growing kind of finger variety that is suitable for growing in pots. And with that sewn, I'm just going over the top with a half inch or one centimeter layer of the same potting mix, just to get the seeds out of sight. There we are. Now you could try growing your carrots in a beautiful basket, for example. It looks really attractive, I've done that before. These will grow just fine outside, but once things turn much colder and frostier as autumn progresses, you may want to bring them in somewhere sheltered, such as a greenhouse or cold frame, to keep them growing. Next on the list are some bush beans. I'm sowing these into this nice long trough here because it will give them all a bit more room and I can space the seeds a good distance apart. I want them about six to eight inches or 15 to 20 centimetres apart and I'm sowing them in a kind of zigzag formation like this so they're nicely spaced. Just poking them in about one to two inches or sort of three to five centimetres deep. I've seen troughs like this on, on window ledges and also, for example, balconies. They just look great and make a real feature in their own right. Fresh beans ready to pick at your disposal. Now, next, I'm gonna do a quick sowing of pea shoots. Now, I've grown these before, but at this time of year, we can sow them quite densely and just have them growing quite quickly within, say, three weeks ready to harvest. First job is to line a tray like this, and this is like an old mushroom container. Now let's go in with our potting mix. I'm just using an all-purpose potting mix. That's just fine. Now let's go in with our pea seeds. Ideally, we'd have soaked these for at least five hours or even overnight, but at this warm time of year, they'll germinate soon enough. I'm going to space them between one and two inches, that's uh, three to five centimetres apart, and space them right across the surface of the potting mix. That should do it. Now just to cover the seeds over with about a two to three centimetre or one inch layer of more of the potting mix. I'll keep this really, really moist, and the peas should germinate within the week, I'd have thought. And we'll be getting our first pea shoots possibly within three weeks, but certainly four. And when I harvest them, I'll just cut them just above the lowest joint of leaves, and they should even re-sprout and give a second crop. And finally, let's just tidy up these edges here. Late summer is also a fantastic time to carry on sowing salad leaves. That could be things like salad leaf mixes, endive, as well as a lot of uh, salads that will flower prematurely or bolt if sown earlier on in the summer. Now things like arugula or rocket or cilantro or coriander, which I'm going to be sowing now, these will flower very quickly earlier on in the summer, and that's because they respond to increasing day length but later on in the summer, the days are getting shorter, so they will be much less inclined to do that. So it's worth sowing them after the longest day of the year because you'll get a much better crop. So let's sow them now. And then again, just sprinkle some more of the potting mix over the top until the seeds disappear from sight. If you're a bit of a scatterbrain like me, don't forget to label your pots as well. I've then got this rosemary here, which I reckon is ready to go on into the next stage. So I've got this nice big planter here. I'm gonna pop it in the middle. And then I've got a stunning kind of variegated thyme to go towards the edge. And then a couple of parsleys as well at either side. And I'm gonna fill in all around these with a soil-based potting mix for improved drainage. All I've got to do now is give everything a really thorough water and keep those sown pots and trays nice and moist to encourage germination. We'll be picking well into late summer, autumn and beyond. I do hope you're enjoying Plenty to Pick as well and are inspired to try growing something more just as soon as we're wrapped up here. Do check out the playlist at the end of the video on growing in containers. There's loads there to keep you inspired and busy. 
please do join in the conversation below. Don't be shy. And if you haven't already, take the leap and subscribe. Jump off the garden fence, smash that subscribe button and ding the notification bell as well. Next time we'll be taking a more general look at what else can be sown at this time of year to plant both outside or later on in the season under cold protection. I hope you'll join me then. In the meantime, happy gardening and I will catch you next time.